参加 Python Taiwan 的会众，大家好。嗯、uh, ，Welcome to Python Taiwan. The next speaker is Antonio Gosh, and he will be talking about football soccer data analysis, a pedagogic introduction. So, welcome, Antonio. Hi, everyone. So, I am Antonio、uh, Gosh、uh, from the School of、uh, Fundamental Sciences, Metz University. So, today I'm going to talk about、uh, football soccer data analysis. So, this is my、uh, Twitter handle. Uh, and you can find my website here.、Uh, go check it out. And、uh, thanks, Python Taiwan, for、uh, giving me this opportunity to speak at this、uh, renowned conference. Like I'm really happy to be here with the whole、uh, community. And this is my first uh, time uh, like presenting at Python Taiwan, and、uh, I'm really glad. So thank you very much. So yeah. So this is the、um, abstract. So I'm going to cover how to、uh, get open access event data from Statsbomb using the Statsbomb Py package. Then how to draw a soccer pitch using NPL soccer package in Python. How to then visualize a pass network for a particular team in a particular match. Then how to use the NetworkX module from Python to、uh, analyze the pass networks using the concepts of、uh, complete network analysis in mathematics. Then how to draw、uh, pass maps along with their corresponding heap maps, and finally I'm going to implement some simple computational geometric concepts like convex hulls, Voronoi diagrams, and Voronoi triangulations、uh, using the Python package called SciPy dot special on、uh, on some football event and tracking data. So that's the whole plan.、Uh, so let's start. So as we do for any package, we pip install statsbombpy and.、Uh, The open data from Statsbomb Pi can be、uh, Statsbomb can be accessed from their uh, like uh, GitHub repo, and go check out the terms and conditions. Make sure to check out the terms and conditions.、Uh, Statsbomb Pi we import、uh, SV. Then we like any other data science、uh, project we import NumPy and Pandas package that help us manipulate our data sets and perform analysis. So that's what we do here, and. Then we、uh, get access to the competitions dataset. So competitions dataset consists of the、um, high-level information about the whole,、uh, like about the whole、uh, season of、uh, the football that was played. So we call it using SB dot competitions function、uh, and store it in comp dataset. This is the first fifteen、uh, rows. And it has a competition ID and the season ID, which both together will work as a single unique ID. And then we have the country name,、uh, which is actually a continent name that is Europe, so it's on European football. Then the competition name. Here we see a Champions League, but、uh, there might be some cases where it's a, a German league or La Liga、uh, in Spain and so on. And here is the competition gender. So unfortunately, the first fifteen rows is male, but、uh, if you print the whole dataset, you will see there are male genders too. And、uh, the season name, so it was when the season took place, and so on. Now let let us make、uh, like as I said, we, we will use the competition ID and the season ID together as a unique ID、uh, to extract the data,、uh, like extract information. So here we take the first row where the competition ID and the season ID was、uh, competition ID was sixteen and the season ID was four. Here we pass this information、uh, in SB dot matches function and store it in mat. So that's what we do here, and this is what the mat dataset looks like now. So this also has a match ID which is a unique ID, then a match date,、uh, then when the kickoff、uh, when the game started. As we saw, this is a、uh, European Champions League. Then the season is 2017-18, and the、uh, home team was Real Madrid, and the away team was Liverpool. And the Real Madrid defeated Liverpool three、uh, one. So here the match ID is one eight two four five, and we will use this to extract the even data set, even data from this、uh, match. So that's what we do here. We pass the、uh, match ID to SB dot events function, store it in events data set. And、uh, this is what the whole dataset looks like. It's a large dataset, but we will work with specific columns and rows to、uh, for our purpose.、Uh, this completes our section on how to get、uh, access to、uh, open event data for a particular football match. Then we'll see how to visualize a football pitch using the、uh, MPL Soccer package. So, so 
if you do not want to create a football pitch manually using python uh, which would be rather tedious you can simply use the mpl soccer module uh, and it, it was developed by anmol dugapal and andrew rolison go check their twitter handles and their websites if you can again we pip install uh, mpl soccer uh, it note that it uses python 3.6 plus so it sh- this should be important and then we import a matplot library so a matplotlib uh, .pyplotsplt and from mpl soccer.pitch we import the pitch class with capital p so this should also be noted now uh, you have to draw the pitch and we do that by using the pitch function with capital p then we set the set the pitch color to be grass uh, light color white stripe true constant layout true and so on and this is what we get and if we set the label axis and peak to be true you will get the ranges of the x and y axis for this page by default uh, stats bomb uh, like mpl soccer shows the stats bomb type pitch uh, which has a x range from 0 to 120 and y range from 80 to 0 so this is by default but uh, uh, here you can uh, also change the color of the pitch uh if you set pitch color to be black you will get this pitch this also looks cool uh now instead of using stats bomb if you want to use uh, a pitch type which is different from stats bomb that also can be done so you just have to type like set uh, the pitch type to opta track app skill corner y scout metrica sports uefa and you can also customize your uh, own uh, type of pitch so if you pass uefa pitch type So this is what it will look like. So here the x range, x axis ranges from zero to slightly above hundred, and y axis ranges from zero to seventy. You can also uh, change the pitch to make it vertical. By default, it is horizontal. Uh, you can also show half the pitch, and so on. So these are the basic concepts of uh, MPL soccer. Now we will try to uh, visualize and analyze and pass network from a particular match for a particular team. and like then analyze it using complex networks concepts uh, so we will pip install network x uh, we then import network x as nx we pip install sivon for some visualization we'll see later uh, and we import sivon as snx so now if you look into the events data set uh, we notice that there is a column named tactics that provides us with the team lineups formations player ids and their jersey number from both the teams okay so the corresponding row values for column type gives us an idea about whether it was the starting 11 formation or was a tactical shift so in this case we will mainly focus on uh, the starting 11 player building the pass network of the first starting 11 player uh, because there will be lots of passes otherwise the number of passes goes down and it won't generate a good analysis so even the mpl soccer's uh, documentation page uses the same concept let us generate a completely new data set only to focus on the tactics and the type columns we will filter the data in such a way that the tactics column has no rows set to none this should be taken care of so that's what we do here tactics equals to events where events tactics dot is null is equals to equals to false and then we take the first we take the columns tactics team and type So this is what the tact tact data set looks like. Okay. So tactics team and type. The tactics uh, column has uh, an entry for a particular row. The tactics column has an entry uh, which is a uh, Python dict object with uh, one of the keys as formation and one of the keys as lineup. And we will use this lineup to extract the player information. Uh, this is the team Real Madrid Liverpool and the type whether it was starting eleven, starting eleven, tactical shift. Tactical shift means there was a substitution. So we will only focus on the first two rows. So that's what we do here. We set the type to be starting eleven, and then we uh, separate the teams: one for Real Madrid and one for Liverpool, and set them as tact real tact Liverpool. And then we extract the tactics <coughs> column. But for now, we are only interested in the key lineup. So we take the tact real zero, and then we take the uh, lineup. and uh, we will change the dict uh, dictionary to a pandas uh, like sorry the dictionary to a dataset by using from dict function provided by pandas and this is what it looks like so we have the player uh, here the name is kelan navas his id is 5597 uh, 
this position is uh, position eight is one, and uh, the position name is goalkeeper, and his jersey number is one. We'll just use a simple for loop and store the information in separate dictionaries for both the teams. So that's what we do here. We see that uh, Kellen Navas has uh, value one. The key Danny Carvajal has value two, and so on. Uh, same, same for Liverpool. Liverpool. Now, now from the events data set, we will extract out the relevant columns for our past network analysis purposes. purposes. So, so these are the columns that we need for now. Minute, second, team, type, location, pass and location, pass outcome and the player involved. Okay. So if we see the first 10 rows for Real Madrid, uh, sorry, uh, this is for the whole data set. So we see this is what it looks like. So, so the, the next step, step is to filter the data set by teams and store them as new data sets, one for Real Madrid and one for Liverpool. So that's what we do here. As we are only interested in the past network generation, we will next filter the data sets by keeping those rows where the type is set to pass. Okay, and we will discard all the other types. So that's let us now careful, very carefully observe the data set. So suppose from the events P and real data set, we are focusing on the second and third row. Okay. So suppose we are focusing on the second and third row. So we see uh, the player is Luka Modric for the second row and Danny Carvajal in the third row. Uh, and Luka Modric makes the pass at around 0th minute and 10 second and Danny Carvajal receives the pass at around 0th minute and 11 second. So if we see here, so 0th minute, 10 second and 0th minute, 11 second. And uh, so, in both the data sets, we need to add two extra columns named as pass maker and pass receiver, where pass maker column would be similar to player column, and the pass receiver column would be the player column whose index would be shifted by one place in the negative direction. So, this can be achieved by the shift function uh, provided by pandas. So, that's what we do here. And uh, if we uh, add the columns pass maker and pass receiver, we'll see here. Uh, for, for the, the second case, case, the pass maker was Luka Modric, and the third and the pass receiver was Danny Carvalho, uh, just like we wanted. And uh, same for Liverpool. So here, if you look uh, into these uh, two columns, location and pass and location, uh, here the entries are lists with two elements. So the first element of the list gives the uh, x coordinate, the second element gives the y coordinate. So, so here, uh, where the ball was at the starting of the event, and where the ball and pass and location gives where the ball soccer ball ended, uh, like the football ended. So we'll let us see how to separate these two columns into four different columns. So one for x-axis, y-axis, for both the cases. Uh, now there might be passes which were not successful. So note that in Statsbomb, data pass data passes whose pass outcome are set as NAN are actually the successful passes. Otherwise, it would be mentioned whether it was out or like unsuccessful and so on. So that's what we do here. Uh, and we also reset the index, of the data frames. So these are the renewed data sets. So it seems we have been able to logically clean and modify the data sets. Now we will uh, are only focused on building the pass network among the players who were in the starting element from both the teams. So, so, so we'll discard out the rows which consist of past events and uh, that took place after the substitution. Okay, okay. so we discard those rows where uh, the after after the first substitution took place for both the teams. Uh, so here, let us filter the data sets even real and even uh, Liverpool by setting the type to be substitution, and this will give us the information of when the first substitution took place. <coughs> so this is what we do here. So, so we see for Real Madrid, Madrid the first substitution took place at 36th minute and for Liverpool it took place at 29th minute. Uh, so we extract those information uh, and now, now we will filter our data sets by making those passes, uh, pass events that took place before the first substitution. So um, I apologize for the typo here. So that's what we do here. And uh, we discard out those rows, and this, these are the renewed uh, data sets. Now, from the data sets, we'll split the location and the pass and location columns, as I said, in two columns, each representing, uh, each representing the uh, coordinates and name them as pass maker x, pass maker y, pass receiver x, and pass receiver y. So, we do that first for Real Madrid, and we see uh, 
that we have four columns pass maker x pass maker y pass receiver x pass receiver y <coughs> same for liverpool and inspired by the way given here so check this link as i was said about uh mpl soccer's uh, way of doing this we'll take the average locations of the so we'll then take the average locations of the starting 11 players on the field for a unified construction of the pass network for the whole game and we'll uh, also will count the number of passes created by these players so we use the group by function of pandas and then we use aggregate agg uh, which is the aggregate function to get the mean like the average locations so one for average location real so this is for real madrid we see that the passmaker x mean has been calculated and passmaker y's mean has been calculated and also the number of passes that were made by that player so that has also been calculated here so we see that for casemiro his mean x throughout the whole game was 60.845 and mean y was 31.836 and there were 11 passes that he uh, created Uh, as we see the group by function from pandas please even pn dot real even pn real into groups indexed by their player names but the, the aggregate function aggregates the data into averages of the pass makers locations and also counts the number of passes made by these players okay so this is what we do here so once we sort out the starting 11 pass makers average locations in a game we'll try to figure out the number of times a particular pass maker pass the ball to a particular pass receiver Okay, and here be sure that uh, the the whole analysis should be directed. So A passing to B doesn't mean B passing to A. So it's not identical to uh, as intuition says. It's not identical to that. Okay. So we'll use the group by and the count function to count the number of rows where a unique player A passed the ball to another unique player B. So that's what we do here. We also reset the index, and we see that Casemiro. Passed one time to Car uh, uh, Carvajal. He passed one time to Luka Modric. He passed one time to Marcelo. He passed six times to Cassie, uh, sorry Cruz. And if we add all these uh, numbers, we'll see that it will end up to eleven, uh, as we saw before. And same for Liverpool. Uh, let's rename the index column to number of passes, uh, just for our advantage. And now we'll merge the data sets have lock real and pass real let us identify the left and right data frames for performing the match because that's what uh, is important here here have lock real is the left data frame and the pass real is the right and we'll use the merge function from pandas to carry out the merging operation that's what we do here and this is the new data set that we end up with so pass maker pass receiver and the number of passes he made uh, his average x location his average y coordinate x coordinate and y coordinate and the total pass that he created so it would be 11 for that casemiro for wherever it is casemiro okay so it would be 11 for all the rows where the pass maker is casemiro and here the left on argument uh specifies the column names to join our right data frame on and the right index argument decides whether to use the index from the right data frame as the key for joining Okay, so if you know XQL, this would be a little bit uh, easier to understand, but if you go through it slowly, you will understand later also. So let us do the same operation for the other team. So this is what for Liverpool. Finally, we will again perform a merge on these updated data sets for adding the average locations of the pass receivers and the number of times the receiver received the ball, as we did for pass maker. So this is the renewed data set here. Uh, number of, so pass receiver x pass receiver y and the number of passes received <coughs> same for liverpool so and finally we'll replace the players uh, names with their jersey numbers and create another pair of new data sets okay so that's what we did here here the pass maker and pass receiver has been replaced by their jersey numbers and uh, same for liverpool uh, next, we will uh, visualize the pass networks for both the teams. So, here we again use the pitch function to uh, create the pitch, and then we use the arrows uh, pitch dot arrows function uh, to get the uh, edges like that indicate uh, who which player passed to which player, and the thickness of the edges mean uh, there were more number of passes, 
and arrows give arrows represent from wh which player the ball went to another player and uh, the here the nodes like you can draw the nodes by using pitch dot scatter function and here, here the nodes uh, represent the average locations of the player for the team in the whole game and the numbers represent the jersey numbers of the player okay so this is for real madrid and this is for liverpool uh, now that we have been successful in correctly visualizing the past networks of the teams involved in the game, we will now start analyzing our networks using metrics from the literature of complex network analysis. Uh, so, keep in mind that now we don't need the average locations. Okay, we just need the pass maker index that is the jersey number, the pass receiver index that is the uh, that is also the jersey number, and the number of passes which will give the age or the weight of the age in that network that we are considering. Here, the network that we are going to uh, create should be isomorphic to the network that we just saw, but we are not focused on the location here, okay? Because for our analysis, we don't need the locations. So we'll next convert the past real new to a list of tuples, uh, and that would be helpful. And here we use nx or digraph uh, function from network edge because it's a direct. It should be a directed graph, and we for each. For i in the range length of L real, we will keep on uh, adding the nodes in that graph along with their edges with a particular weight. Okay. And that's what we do here. And then we draw the graph. And this is what we end up with. Again, the thickness represents the number of passes. That is the weight. And the direction give which pair pass to which pair. And the nodes are the players with their jersey numbers okay and here again the but this no network is isomorphic to the network of real madrid we saw in the pitch same for liverpool and uh, next we will use network is to find out the node degrees so node degrees mean uh, the number of edges uh, a node is connected to so, so that, that represents, represents in physical sense the total number of passes uh, the player was involved with. So we use nx dot degree function for Real Madrid. Uh, uh, we see that for just number 14, there were 12, uh, the node degree is 12, for just number 2, the node degree is 17, and so on. Uh, so out of 11 starting players, uh, we see that for uh, Tony Cruz, it was the highest degree. So he is the uh, midfield, midfield maestro, so, so that's the reason he has been in for like he has been involved in the largest number of passes in the team. Same for Liverpool, and here we see Milner and uh, Henderson were uh, involved in maximum number of passes. Okay, uh, we can also calculate the in degrees and out degrees. So in degrees means the number of passes a player received, and out degrees means the number of passes he gave. So we can do the same thing. You can also draw the adjacency matrix. Uh, so here, if we see, uh, we'll see that the diagonals have all entries zero, which represent that a player cannot pass to himself. So that's what the intuition says. So next, we work on a metric that focuses on a geodesic distance between two player nodes in a graph. So one way to implement this is to divide the weight by one so, so we are just uh, like inversing the weight in the past network and then create a new graph so that's what we do here and this is the corresponding uh, graph but here the weight is just inversed uh, same for liverpool and using this modified graphs we can calculate the all pair shortest paths between the nodes for both the teams okay so let's compute that for real madrid and if you want you can calculate the shortest path from one player to another uh, like we want to do that for Kellen Navas to Ronaldo so just number one to seven and if we want that we'll just type this so print this real one to seven and we'll see one to four to twelve to seventeen this this path would have been the shortest path if it was followed from uh, the uh, goalkeeper to the forward this seems to be a good post-match analysis tool but, and I got this idea uh, after discussing with Sarath Babu from IIST, India. So we can do the same thing for Liverpool. 
Now, now we'll calculate another important metric called eccentricity also based on the um, shortest distance. So eccentricity of a player node P tells us how far the furthest player node from P is positioned in the pass network. So we calculate for each nodes. Uh, we can also calculate the average eccentricity and we see that it's around 1.9 for Real Madrid. Uh, we can, and for Liverpool it's also around 1.9. We can also calculate the average clustering coefficient of a graph. Uh, so for Liverpool it's around 0 0.18 and for, uh, uh, sorry, Real Madrid it's around 0 0.18 and for Liverpool it's around 0 0.27. So it lies in the range 0 and 1 where a value of 0 denotes the fact that none of the nodes are connected. And 1 means it's a click. So all the nodes are connected with each other. So we see that interestingly the average clustering coefficient is later, lesser for Real Madrid, pass network, but more for uh, Liverpool. So, so we, we can, can also calculate, calculate the centrality, which says which player was the which, which node was the import, most important player. So, so we'll calculate, calculate the betweenness centrality. So for uh, Real Madrid, we see it was Casemiro, and for Liverpool, we see it was uh, Milner. So that ends my uh, talk about uh, the past network analysis. Next, uh, we'll see how to get pass map and their corresponding heat maps. So, again, let's look into the events data set. For now, we will need the uh, columns team, type, minute, location, pass and location, pass outcome and player. So, that's what we do here. Uh, so, <coughs> we are now interested in particular player. So, we'll set the player to uh, Tony Cruz uh, because he was, he's a, very good midfielder and let's see how it looks like for his, uh, let's see how the pass map and the hit map looks like for him. So we'll uh, filter the data set by the name player named Tony Cruz. That's what we do here. And this is the data set after filtering. And the type column in events pass P1 has event types other than passes. So we'll set them only to pass. And uh, that's what we do here. We also, also reset the index. And so, so we have been successful in extracting out the pass event data for Tonicus. And we see that he was involved in 92 passes. And there were like successful passes which were given by Nan. He, some passes made by him were out, some were incomplete, and some were pass upside. Offside. So these three are unsuccessful passes actually. <coughs> So we uh, like replace NAN with successful if we want. So we do that here. So this is the data set. Again, we separate the location and pass and location to two columns each. So location X, location Y, pass and location X, pass and location Y. And then we draw the uh, corresponding pass map and its heat map. So, so we, we use uh, Seaborn's KD plot. So I got this idea from uh, the YouTube video by uh, Mackey Johns. And uh, please check his video out. Uh, a big shout out to him. And uh, that's what we uh, do here. We uh, plot. So we again use the pitch dot arrows and pitch dot scatter. Pitch dot arrows to denote the pass direction and pitch dot scatter to plot the location of Tony Cruz in that particular moment. Uh, so that's what we do and green represents the successful passes and red represents the unsuccessful passes. So we see here two corners were successful uh, which sent the ball to one of his teammates and these two corners were unsuccessful. And so and that's it. Uh, so study more about KDP to KD plot you can look here in this link. Uh, we, we can, can also calculate, calculate uh, the percentage of successful and other kind of passes. Uh, here is the frequency distribution. So uh, around 91.3% were successful, successful passes for Tonicus. That's really wild. Next, uh, we will uh, talk about visualizing the convex hulls from players' events data. So we will in, we'll be entering now to implement it. We will be entering now to the implementation of uh, computational geometric concepts in uh, players' events data from that match. So first we'll draw, study how to develop a convex hull around those points, locations denoted by x and y coordinates, 
from where a player had made a pass or had taken a shot in a particular game. So mathematically, uh, if these points are contained in a set X, then the convex hull in the is the smallest convex set that contains X. So this will help us get an idea about the optimal field coverage of a player during the match. So that's what the physical meaning means. Uh, so this is one of the representation of the convex hull. So it has been adapted from the Wikipedia article. Mm. Convex cell, go check it out. So we'll use the SciPy package for uh, for this analysis. Uh, as you have been doing till now, let us import uh, important uh, important columns from that events dataset. So we stored them in events hull. So team, location, type, and player. So this is what the dataset looks like. By now, you would have understand uh, like you would understand how to uh, manipulate the dataset. So it seems like uh, we only need four columns for now. We'll first filter the dataset by setting type to pass or short. Uh, sorry, uh, setting. Uh, so we'll uh, first filter the dataset by setting type to pass or short. Okay, yeah. So that's what we do here. We also reset the index, and this is what the dataset looks like. And then we'll split the location column into location x and location y column, as we have been doing, and we discard the location column. Then we'll uh, next split the data into two data sets, one for Real Madrid and another for Liverpool. And next we'll list down the name of the players for both the teams. This is required for our, uh, to make sure that we don't uh, make any mistakes with the names. So we'll now extract the event data for Tony Cruz from events are real. Uh, so that's what we do here. And before computing and visualizing the convex hull, it is good practice to discard the outliers from the data sets. So, a common method that researchers use is a interquartile range. So, that's what we'll do here. We'll find the interquartile ranges for the columns uh, location X and location Y from events cell 20 and then compute the upper and lower bounds of the data. Any points uh, lying uh, beyond these uh, uh, bounds, that is, any point lying above the lower bound and any point lying below the upper bound are decided to be outliers and they are discarded. So uh, Mac, I think Mackay Jones in his uh, Jones in his uh, YouTube video he used the uh, Z square score to do this, but here we'll use the interquartile range. So let's see. So we we'll, we use box plots and whisker plots to visualize the interquartile range for the data points. So that's what we do here, and this is the box plot, and we see uh, this is the, these are the whiskers and any data sets uh, for the location X uh, the points lying outside it would be considered as uh, outliers. So we'll compute the quartiles, the interquartile range and the minimum and maximum values. That's what we do here. And then we calculate the upper and lower bound. Finally, we'll drop the outliers if present. Okay. So then we'll again look into the events hull Tony dataset, which has been renewed now after discarding the outliers. And then we collect all the points from the Two columns as a 2D matrix. Uh, this comes in aid while drawing the convex hull. So, by using values, we do that. And now let us come use the convex hull function from scipy.special. That's what we do here. This convex hull is uh, represented by the vertices. So, if you want to learn more about vertices and simplex, go through these slides a little bit slowly. And also, you can check the Wikipedia article. Uh, so we separate the vertices and simplices and then we have collected all the useful information and we'll just visualize the convex cell on a football match. So again we draw the pitch, then we use plot.scatter to get the location and location uh, x and location y and then uh, we run a loop through the simplices and we draw the hull, convex hull. Okay, so that's what we do here. So, so convex hull boundary, boundary uh, and like we will use the fill function to fill this uh, uh, like fill this boundary, fill this space. So that's what we do here. We see this is uh, Cruz's uh, field coverage against Liverpool. So we can also draw the convex hulls for other players from either of the teams. So that's what we show here. <laughs> Next we'll see how to get tracking data. Uh, and draw the delenoid triangulations and the voronoid diagrams. Okay, so we have been able to compute and visualize the convex cells for players from a particular game. Uh, next, we use the Statsmom API to get the 
checking data. So as if you remember, we have been using the match ID 18245. And we need to first import if full classes from MPL mom module. Uh, so that's what we do here from MPL mom import read event and event slug. So uh, as again, we'll use the code from here, like the MPL soccer documentation, go check it out. So this is a link here. So if you click here, it will be, you will be redirected to that page uh, to extract that tracking data for that match. That's what we do here. Let, Let us look into the event and tracking data sets. And looking at the two data sets, event and tracking, we understand that the former represents the event data and the latter represents the tracking data set. So we can draw, you can uh, write, like find out the column names. So in the tracking data set, uh, we understand that the column ID represents an unique ID, uh, represents a unique ID. Again, sorry for the typo. For a short freeze frame, that it uh, that is it gives the unique ID for the moment when a particular player was taking a shot, along with information about the locations of the other players. Looking at the player name column, we need to add a column team to the tracking dataset, giving us information about which team the shot taker belongs to. So that's what we do here. So if you look into the dataset, we get uh, the team here. And uh, now we will extract the relevant columns like ID, player name, X location, X location, Y location, and the team. And uh, these are the unique IDs. So using these IDs, we'll uh, draw the delivery regulations and the modernized items. So let us now try collecting the jersey numbers. Uh, so we will use a different and easier approach from the one that we used before. So we use sb.lineups function and set the match ID to be 18245. Let's store it in player info data set. So it has information about both the teams. Let us fetch for Real Madrid first. That's what we do here. We see that it has a player ID, player name, player nickname, his jersey number, and the country he originally belongs to. So this is an easier way to get it. So we build a dictionary again, same for Liverpool. Now, let, let us select a particular ID from a tracking data set, representing an instance where a particular shot was taken. We'll filter the tracking by an ID value, which will give us the information of the locations of the players on the pitch at that particular moment. So let's look into, so these are all different kinds of IDs available. So we select one, and we have selected one and set it as short ID, and then we filter the data set using that short ID uh, from we select those rows where the ID value is this particular short ID. Okay. And then take this column as ID, player name, X, Y, team name, and so on. So this is the filter data sets. Here, if we see, look at the ID names, we see these are all same. So you can also discard the ID uh, column if you want. So we see the player name, X, location, Y, location, and the team that player belongs to. It will consist of both Real Madrid and Liverpool. So, so next we'll compute the Delano triangulations from a team's player location to get an idea about the possible links created among the teammates by the placement of the slave of those players at that instance. If you want to learn more about uh, Delano triangulation, go check this Wikipedia article. I also took this uh, like diagram from the Wikipedia article. So we need to import Delano from scipay.special. That's what we do here. Uh, let us separate the data filter for the two teams. Uh, similarly, uh, we create a 2D matrix by using the values uh, as we did before for uh, convex hull. Then we compute the triangulations by using the Delonoi function. And create two more data sets for aiding us with, the, uh, with uh, annotating the jersey number for the players on their respective nodes while visualizing the players on that page. That's what we do here. And finally, we visualize the triangulations of the player's positions at that instance on that pitch. So we use pair plt.scatter function and the triplot helps us plot the delinear triangulations. And for this is for Real Madrid, uh, it creates a link. And uh, well, these are all the, liver, the red nodes denote the Liverpool players. Okay. So, so the, the red notes indicate locations of Liverpool players and the white notes are for Real Madrid. The black lines indicate the direct links between the players. 
at a particular moment forming the delinear triangulations also called the past triangulations so the book by soccer the book soccer matrix by dr sumter mentions that uh, these lines have two useful indications so first they portray the availability of passes among the players from a particular team and second they also indicate the no man's lines for the players from the opposition team that means if an opposition player is on one of these linking lines then they are at a disadvantage so that's a beautiful implementation of number channel geometry so uh, professor uh, sumter uh, he is one of the best uh, in the business of uh, like uh, soccer data analysis so go check his youtube video too so you will learn a lot if you check his youtube video and also his if you read his book soccer matrix i learned a lot from this book so and finally we'll compute the voronoi diagrams for the players of the same instance uh, on which we have computed the delinear triangulations so voronoi diagram are the uh, dual of the delinear triangulations so they help us visualize the zones of each player on a pitch at the particular moment of the game play so mathematically voronoi diagrams for a set x for of points denote the partitions of a 2d euclidean space the pitch space here into regions that are close to each of these points So, so again, look at the Wikipedia article, article from where I took this uh, diagram. Uh, they are interrelated in a way that they are dual to each other. That is, uh, if you want to learn more about dual, uh, check them out. So, for computing the Voronoi diagrams, uh, remember to use the data filtered data set because we need the location of all the players on that pitch. Okay. So, again, uh, to compute and visualize the Voronoi diagrams, we need to import Voronoi. Plus for computing the Voronoi diagrams and Voronoi plot to need to plot the diagrams on that pitch. So that's what we do here. Again, we take the values to create the 2D matrix, and finally we visualize the computed diagrams. So this is this gives the uh, locate like uh, partition of the pitch, like the dominant area uh, for a player on that at that instance of the game. Zone. So this gives us the zones of each and every player on the pitch at a particular moment by breaking the pitch into distinct regions. So that's what it's doing. So this completes our section on uh, implementation of uh, computational geometric concepts of on football event and tracking data. So this completes my presentation. And uh, these are very important references: the SC Python blog, the, the book Soccer Matrix that I talked about by Dr. David Sumter. the friends of tracking youtube channel managed by dr sumter the youtube channel by mike jones check it out and the book the theory on complex networks that helped me in the complex network analysis part so that's it that's the end uh, thank you wear your masks get vaccinated and stay safe that's it uh, so thank you andrano for this amazing talk and now we are heading Welcome. on heading into the q and a session So, for the first question, is it possible to use this data to train a machine learning model for soccer teams to predict opponents' passes in future games? Uh, see, uh, the thing is, predicting opponents' passes in future games, uh, like we have to build a very accurate model for that, and it seems like it's a hard problem because uh, if we can predict the future passes. like that solves most of the problems right so yeah it 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 is possible but uh, yeah again it's a very hard problem actually but we can try right so <laughs> yeah so uh, maybe someday you will yeah. you can do that in the future so the next question uh, is it possible to get data on field pass attempts like um, passes that don't reach a teammate yeah it is so like if you look into my 24th slide uh so there are so actually uh, the stats bomb data said that, that they post in the pass outcome column if it's the nan nan value that means it was a complete pass so it was a successful pass uh, so uh, and if you go through that column you will find some some values which are either incomplete or out or something else so those are uh, like unsuccessful passes so yeah uh, they, mm. okay, so the uh, answer is yes <laughs> yeah um yeah. so the next question could these data be applied in real games like for the judges to decide decide the most valued player in games for an objective from an objective perspective do you think this is possible 
Uh, yes, it is. So uh, recently, there have been many research. So people are trying to write uh, research papers based on uh, these questions. So they are trying to solve these questions. So yeah, it is possible. Yeah, it is. Hmm. OK, the next question. Uh, what insight could we get from the data? Would the results uh, um, would the results be useful for like training in games tactics or other things? Um, this is kind of similar to the similar, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's possible but difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the next question uh, is there more questions? Uh, so someone else asked a uh, nice talk. I'm wondering how you create your slides. Uh, so yeah, uh, in Jupyter Notebook, there is a op there is one option to like um, uh, create slides. So mm -hmm. from Jupyter Notebook itself, yeah. So oh. if you go to YouTube and search how to create slides from uh, Jupyter, uh, there are lots of tutorials. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so are there more questions from Slido? Oh, I think um, so. That's all the questions from the side. Yeah. So, thank you, Indranil, for today's talk.